but this has been God. thoroughly debunked. Now, if you have bad knees or they give you knee pain, you should go easy on them, but. I don't even know where we're at right now. Holy buckets. This is just an absolute nightmare right now. Um, quad, okay, leg extensions. All right, leg extensions, guys. Um, so I had ACL and meniscus surgery, and I had patellar tendon surgery. One on the left leg, one on the right leg. And this is always in PT. You know, they're saying like, oh, these are bad for your knees or whatever. But both times in physical therapy, they're like, this is like the quintessential way to build your quad back. Because like when you get the surgery, your, your VMO muscle just like atrophies to the max. Your quads get so small because you're cutting through um, like a nerve or something that just shuts the muscle off. So it just shrinks to the max. And it's one of the hard, you know, I said that lunge is one of the hardest exercises. It was. But this is also like just, and brother, you can, it's hard to even do with one pound at first. So that's one pound, that's a two pound ankle weight, that's a three pound ankle weight, that's a five pound ankle weight. And I had surgery in April, 2022, you know what I'm saying? And we're freaking July, 2024. And I still can't do leg extensions comfortably. So this is a must in all honesty. Like I, a lot of times I say you gotta do the free weights over the machines and stuff, but this is one machine that, you know, just for the sake of freaking building that that VMO muscle, uh, especially if you've ever had a surge, a knee surgery, like this is a must. You gotta you gotta put this in S. There's no convincing evidence that they cause knee issues any more than any other quad exercises. But the great thing about the leg extension nice. is that your hips are fixed. This means that unlike squat-based exercises, your rectus femoris will actually stretch and contract here. This makes it the first exercise where all four heads of the quads will be nice. engaged. This is even more the case if you set the seat back. Fact, Come on, bro. Freaking rated right. more overall quad growth, and especially more rectus femoris growth with the seat back leg extension position. That's most likely because it places the rectus femoris under more stretch. Come on, brother. And even though some studies do show similar leg growth oh, between right. extensions and squats, those are short-term studies. I'm just frankly doubtful that doing leg extensions will net you the same quad gains as doing squats over the long term. That said, they're still a staple on my leg on, and they're an exercise I definitely think is worth including. Oh. What the frick? Oh, man. All right, fellas. All right, fellas. Nordic is the same what basic the movement frick? pattern as a leg extension, except they have that. Did you rank this sucker? Did you rank this sucker? God dang it. Did you rank this exercise? I definitely think is worth including. All right, the reverse the Nordic frick? is the same basic movement pattern as a leg extension. All right, I have uh, had to do this in physical therapy as well. You know, just honestly, I'll tell you, I'll call it like it is. I'm sure it's because it's like physical therapists are very similar to personal trainers and they want to throw as much stuff at you too to come across as the highest IQ gurus possible. So like, I know this leg extension, you love it, you feel it a lot. It's very difficult, it's very effective. It's definitely help you progress towards the end goal of where you want to be, but we're not going to do it. Instead, we're going to do this horse crap right here. And I'm not going to say this is a horse crap exercise, but when I had freaking... You know, when I was recovering from surgery and I had to do this, I was like, this is, can we just do the light extension machine? Like, this is not, it doesn't, apples and oranges, fellas. <laughs> apples and freaking oranges. Except they have the added benefit of being more accessible. You don't need a light extension machine to do them. You can also get a much deeper stretch on your quad. Okay, you know, again, let me just say this real fast. You can go on Amazon, you can buy a leg extension for like 80, I just promise you, you can get one for around 100 bucks. And if you care about the growth and all that, to the point where you care about charts so much and all that shit, you probably should just spend 100 bucks. Or you can even get one of those benches uh, you, that has like a leg extension, leg curl thing. I mean, there's so many ways to do leg extensions. You could freaking... There's so many ways to do leg extensions. So I think the access accessibility that this is better and more accessible, uh, brother, just get the freaking leg extension. Okay, again, I'm not saying this has no application or whatever. And, you know, maybe it is great for physical therapy and maybe it's nice to spice the train up a little bit. At the end of the day, we're talking about Mr. Spice, you know what I'm saying? Black and white. But I'm just going to say, like, oh, you don't ever really see has a mr olympia ever done this before no they just freaking go crazy ham bone full cojones on the leg extension it's so much easier to go heavy drop sets just freaking max intensity up the wazoo whereas this it's like okay you know i can do it with the band or then i can do it without the you know i'm, I'm just gonna say 
It's apples and oranges. Bugs here. The slight negative, though, is that they are really tough. I mean, beginners might struggle with them, and they can be hard to overload with weight, so you're a bit more limited on your overload options. You can still add a rep each week, though, or try to get a bit deeper, and because the scratch is S tier on these, and they're so accessible, yeah. I'm gonna put them in A tier. Oh, jeez Louise. Yeah, how you can't put this with this, brother? And how are you gonna put the frickin', what is it, the pendulum squat or the Smith machine squat in front of the leg? The leg, leg extension is like the most quintessential. Guys, let me just tell you something real fast. Look, squatting, S tier. Leg extension, S tier. Lunging, S tier. Really, and then you can even put a leg press in there too. Between the squat, leg press, leg extension, lunge, that's all you need. You don't need anything else. You don't need anything else. Stick to the classics. Wrong. But if you find them really awkward, I'd be cool if you dropped them back a tier or two. All right, let's knock out three final squat variations. Please. One that I love, one that I hate, and one that's just okay. Goblet squats what? are biomechanically very similar to a barbell front squat, so they will highly activate your quads, but because you have to hold a dumbbell in your hands, they're actually a lot harder. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. These feel amazing, especially if you really, you can really prop up those heels, obviously, on a wedge, a squat wedge, or, you know, stand on some plates or anything, get the super deep forward knee drive um, so that you wouldn't even need to use a ton of weight and do high rep sets with this. But I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's, I love this exercise. I do think you're really limited, but it's just getting your whole freaking body strong, okay? It's more comfortable than a front squat, but again, you're limited by the weight. But does that mean you shouldn't do it? Again, I think this is, my squat never exploded in strength the way it had when I was like 20, uh, two and learned, listen guys, let me tell you something. I was a Johnny cookie cutter bodybuilder, like training, not, you know, it's a wrestler in college, but from when I was 11 till when I was 22, I did aside from the strength coach, the strength and conditioning we had to do for wrestling. I did Johnny bodybuilder training. So all I did was like leg press, leg extensions, and I would try squatting because I knew it was good for me, but I had a really hard time like feeling good in the squat, especially getting in the hole. Nothing improved my barbell squatting like goblet squatting, okay? Depending on how you, you know, Dan John is the guy that I think really popularized the goblet squat. And I guess his leverages are different here. I don't know, because when I do a goblet squat, you want to you want a goblet squat down so that your freaking knees or your elbows get in your knees and then you push your knees up. So it really teaches you, it's a great cue to open your hips up, to squat deep in the hole, and keeping that upright torso angle. And guys, once I started goblet squatting, I shit you not, I put 100 pounds in my barbell back squat. From what? Oh, but Eric, you can't use that much weight in a goblet squat, right? Yeah, you can't, but that's not the point. The point is it ingrains this perfect movement pattern. It teaches you how to stay freaking tight, open your hips up. It's, a, it's such a money exercise. And if you aren't a good squatter, do goblet squats for a while and then go back to the, the back squat or do goblet squats to warm up before your back squat. It's a freaking game changer. Or to overload. Once your quads get decently strong, <sighs> you'll be able to squat a lot more weight than you'll be able to comfortably hold. So the goblet squat will quickly be limited to high, um, high rep sets only. These days, I generally only use it in two contexts, for teaching the squat to beginners and as a high rep finisher exercise. These are <laughs> just okay for me and I'm putting them in C or B tier. That's a freaking travesty though, because it is such a great tool. It's such a great tool. And I do think that, like he says, he only uses it for teaching how to squat, which I agree, and high rep sets, which I agree. But the high rep sets are freaking, you know, a lot of people will agree that's the best way to build legs is the high rep sets. So why not, like, you squat on a freaking wedge, elevate those heels, squat on a wedge, do a set of 20 with that, tell me your legs aren't exploding. Right. I guess B tier, since they definitely can have their place. Jump squats will burn some calories, and they aren't terrible for building explosive power, but as a muscle builder, there are just too many other better options out there that'll provide more tension and more hope. Brother, you just freaking hold some dumbbells. There's a million ways you can load, you can put it. If you had like a weight vest, hold some dumbbells, uh, like sand, hold a sandbag and do it. There's a million ways you can do it. So don't say that it's a freaking not enough tension or whatever. Overload. I'm not a fan of these for hypertrophy. F tier, bro, get the freak out of here, dude. Honestly, like, what the frick? F tier? I'm not even, I'm not saying it should be A, I'm not saying it should, I'm not even saying, but dude, this is, I would tell you something right now. Like, there's something to be said. 
if you want to be as big and as strong as possible, you have to do some sort of plyometrics as well because, and I've learned this the hard way, because if you don't do this, guys, you're not strengthening your tendons as much as you could be. And if you're not strengthening your tendons as much as you could be, down the road, one way or another, like, you're at a chance of tearing something, 100%. So strengthening the connective tissues uh, is just, I think it's so key. And I listen, this is coming from a person that doesn't do it as much as he should either. But anytime I forget to do it and I do it, I'm like, God, why don't I do this? This is not hard to incorporate, okay? Same thing with um, like an isometric wall sit. It's not hard to incorporate and it's gonna strengthen your tendons. And if you can strengthen your tendons, you're gonna, you're gonna be better off with your overall strength, bodybuilding goals, okay? So there's just incorporate it a little bit. Holding some dumbbells, do some jumps. You don't have to do a million, you know, do some freaking, do a couple sets of five or something like that to peak your CNS too. How are you gonna put the freaking jump squat in the same category as the lunge, twist, and shout? You know what I'm saying? Quads are brutal, but they sure do work. You'll get a huge stretch on your quads. And you can this is cash money, absolute cash money. If this brother puts this in like C or something, I'll lose my mind. This is money. Each leg unilaterally. Because you, the way you can position yourself. I should end the video. All right. All right, fellas. So I wrapped the freaking video up earlier. And then I said, you know what? Freak it. Let's finish this sucker in the den of trees on the tiny TV. Because you know what? He's got some good exercises to talk about here. I want to talk about these. Bulgarian split squat. Where are we at? The frick's this Dunkin' Donuts sponsor. Get that. A here huge we go. stretch on your quads. And doing each leg unilaterally can be very. Uh, I think I talked about this. Cash freaking muscles. muscles. Because they're so fatiguing and psychologically challenging, I usually only program two sets of these per workout. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay, I had no idea who was going to say that. This is not a good exercise because it's fatiguing and psychologically challenging. That is not a reason to minimize the Bulgarian split squat. What the freak are these new ads here? <laughs> Don't you notice? Hagen does. Holy buckets. Your quads will get more sore doing these than almost any other exercise. And while soreness isn't a one-to-one -one predictor of hypertrophy, in this case, I think it is a good indication oh. that you're hitting the right muscle. I'm putting Bulgarian split squats. Okay, you know what? I'll give, I'll give him an S here. I don't know what that whole psychologically taxing mumbo jumbo was, but at least he's recognizing that this is a good one. And I agree, I mean, what the frick is this, man? This is ridiculous. This is a new system they have. Every time you pause it, they show you an ad. Uh, Bulgarian split squats, I think it's straight up cash money, okay? And again, the reason that I feel like a lot of people don't give them as much credit as they should is people don't really go heavy with them. They do them with the freaking tiny dumbbells, or if they do a bar, it's like the bare minimum weight. I'm talking gas. You can load these suckers up. You can go very heavy with Bulgarian split squats. You can use the biggest dumbbells at the gym without a doubt. And it depending on if you have a good setup, like if you have a good roller, like a Bulgarian split squat, like pad, you know, how they specifically sell those or any sort of like pad where you can rest your foot on, you know, a lot of people use a bench, but if you have like a specific pad, you can go freaking heavy with these suckers. And I will tell you, they'll light you up. And yes, I think they hit your glutes extremely hard, but they also hit your quads and all this stuff guys, with everything we're talking about here, it's like, well, is this a quad or is this a glute? As long as you change your freaking stance up, you can make anything more quad, anything more glute. You know what I'm saying? Some people are like, oh, I just feel, I feel squats and like more of my hips. It's like, okay, well then narrow your freaking stance, you know, elevate your heels. Now all of a sudden it's a totally different freaking ball game. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, let's carry on. This video is extremely long. I should just made this a freaking two-parter, but I'm all about this and I want to freaking talk about it. Because this gets, this floats my jimmies, you know what I'm saying? Last year, deadlifts do activate the quads, but not nearly as much. I would never consider deadlifts a quad exercise. You know what I'm saying? I never once, unless we're talking about deficits, specifically deficit trap bar, now we're on to something, okay? But even like a deficit deadlift per se, very little quads, tremendous hamstrings. Just squats do. That's not surprising when you look at the side view. Oh, yeah. As far as the quads are concerned, a deadlift is basically a quarter squat. You'll get a bit more quad involvement if you deadlift with a sumo stance, but they still don't. It, it, listen, and all this stuff too, it depends on, 
yeah, you might get a little bit more quad in involvement with the sumo stance. But the thing is, like, depending on people's leverages, some people have just freaking, you know, noodle, long noodle arms, jolly green giant arms, and they can bend their knees a quarter inch and get to the bar. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it depends. But the thing is, as long as you freaking, you can put, you can do a deficit, right? So we're talking about a sumo deadlift here. Why don't I freaking one up you? The Ukrainian deadlift. Now, there's something solid. You can keep a totally upright torso. Go ass to grass and um, basically do a squat deadlift pattern, okay? And I think the best way or the easiest way to do that is with a belt squat contraption, okay? But I also have a video. Obviously, you can do with a loading pin and a wedge handle. You just got to stand on two boxes. Now, you do that, we're on to something. But a sumo deadlift, get that shit out of here. Or hold a candle to squats for quad growth. They're much better glute builder, and they're an excellent overall strength builder, but for quadriceps and muscle growth, deadlifts are going in C tier. Step ups are equally not fun as Bulgarian split squats, but also less effective because you get less quad stretch, and they're less stable. They do offer a pretty solid glute stimulus though, especially if you avoid lit. This whole challenge, not as, wait, what do they say, mentally exhausting or something like that? We gotta get that shit out of here, that terminology. Anything that mentally, if it's challenging, that does not knock it down in points. And anything that's a good thing. Because tough situations build tough SOBs. You know what I'm saying? And a tough SOB is going to build muscle better than a freaking soft buttercup. You feel what I'm saying? 100%. So this whole thing, I'm like, well, it's just kind of mentally taxing. It's like freaking good. Then do it more, Okay. If you strengthen your mind, you strengthen your body, okay? Don't avoid tough stuff because it's mentally taxing. You know what I'm saying? That is a quitter's Johnny, uh, Johnny quitter, I guess. I don't know. I just dropped the ball on that one. But it's a freaking quitter's mentality, absolutely. Avoiding the really hard stuff. Uh, and I think step-ups are freaking cash money. Yeah, there's a bit of a balance uh, issue when you're going heavy with them for sure. But anytime I incorporate the step up, especially you get this freaking set. Look at this freaking setup he has here. This thing looks like straight cash money. I mean, my God, the fact that you can go ass to grass step ups, or you can go super heavy and do like ultra heavy, uh, smaller range of motion. Like this thing is just freaking money. Talk about a functional movement pattern too, right? We don't do anything other in, in like in the real world with our legs than like bending over and like walking upstairs. So freaking a step up is like one of the most functional movement patterns there is. So if there's anything the human body's meant to do, it's this shit. Lifting off your back foot, and they can have their place, but overall, I'm feeling C tier on these. I uh, just I don't know what a C. I don't know, but I mean at the end of the day, I guess if the freaking I mean, it's funny that nothing's in D tier, for instance. But uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I, just, I think there should be B. But then we're, you know, we're freaking. There's no point. What's a B? What's a C? Who gives a rat's patoot? All I'm saying is, I can see the value in a lot of things, guys. And I feel like the step ups, the step ups, good. I think you should incorporate it. That's not. To, I mean, I think maybe. Listen, we got a lot of money movements on here. At the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm freaking. We're, we're, you know, what is it? We're plucking hairs or some shit like that but um at the end of the day i'll say i said it once twice thrice i always think um that always picking the free weight over the machine it's the way to go i feel like the step up i get it i get it it's not as stable you feel like you might not get as you could you more easily could get a quadriceps pump and burn with this machine but i just feel like doing a step up will make you a thick stout stallion more easily than the machine will. But I understand that you gotta have the big step. A lot of gyms don't have that. It's not easily accessible there. And when you try to horse some serious weights, it is, the balance is an issue. So I will agree, I'll give it a C, why not? Pistol squats are an impressive movement if you can do them, but the lack of stability and overload limitations knock them down quite a bit for me. I don't know if the pistol squat has a lack of overload limitation per se, because you can always hold dumbbells. You know, you can do a front rack position with a barbell. Obviously, yeah, the stability is definitely a factor, but at the end of the day, like, <sighs> more stability is more strength, you know what I'm saying? The more stable you get, the better your balance gets, like, the more you're going to be able to horse serious weight. So, I, 
I don't think there's anything wrong with working on it. And I will say this is one of those movements where if you're Johnny Toothpick, it's very easy. But if you're Johnny Rotundus, it's going to be very difficult and you'll get a lot more out of it. Um, it's like pull-ups, you know what I mean? Johnny String Bean can bang on a set of 20 and not feel much. Johnny Humongous Rotundus can do a set of 20 and he'll have bulbous bat wings and he'll have a gigantic deadlift. It's like, holy look, it's what do you do? It's like, well, I just do pull-ups. It's because he has so much freaking mass to move around. So I can, I can see that with the pistol squat too. Um, but yeah, I mean, frick it, man. This, let's make this C tier. I don't think this is going to get you thick, gargantuous quads, but you could bang this out anywhere you are. So, you know, you got the freaking multi-versatility of this tool. If you're limited to at-home workouts or bodyweight training, I think they're great, but assuming you have gym access, there are just so many better options. I'm going to put pistol squats in C tier. C? You freaking C? They're similar to reverse Nordics and that they get a huge stretch on your quads. And don't let the name deceive you. These are very challenging. That's it. I always, I don't, this is like freaking, um, this is one of those like, this is like a Vince Geronda exercise, right? And the guy, if I'm not mistaken, he's like the original, and listen, I know people are gonna try to castrate me for saying this, but isn't he like the original charlatan of training, like coming up with goofy new tactics to try to be like, oh, you, you know, you're doing those squats and those bench press, but what you really need to be doing are these sissy squats and these flared guillotine press. You feel that so much more? I think even Arnold trained under Vince and like, there's a clip of him like, you know, asking some pencil neck. It's like, oh, where are, you, where are you trading? And the guy's like, oh, I'm going to Vince's gym. He's like, yeah, I do a lot of, a lot of uh, pencil neck, or what is it, cables. And the, he was like knocking out all the cable exercises that Vince does, basically. And he told him to, you know, drop the freaking Vince membership. Come over to Gold's where we horse serious weights. And I think that that statement still rings true. And, you know, kudos to Arnold for recognizing, you know, the Johnny pencil neck tactics that Vince Gerondo was preaching. And I do think that these sissy squats, I don't feel like, oh man, the sissy squats give you such a deep burn, but all the, <laughs> anytime I've ever seen people do that, it's like the Smith machine with like five pounds on the bar. And I get it, it's super intense and it's super hard and it'll freaking strain your knees like bananas. But I would much rather horse some serious loads and have real, real world application, like a big squat, um, you know what I'm saying? Like freaking, you know, 28 plates on the leg press or horsing some serious lunges versus Johnny five pounds on the Smith machine. You know what I mean? Doing the freaking sissy squats. Personally for me, I would say get this shit out of here, but I bet Jeff's going to make this like a B tier. They're a bit harder to load. So I find them mainly limited to adding reps when it comes to progressive overload. And I find that they have more of a learning curve than the other squat options. People can also find it awkward going up onto their toes. And Just look at this move. I'm not, and this has nothing to do with Jeff, obviously. And kudos to Jeff for making these lists. It's great. I mean, the guy's a tremendous success. His videos get a hell of a ton of views and his content and his peak and all that. So when I say all this stuff, I'm not knocking him by any means. I'm not. I'm really not. I'm just... It's more I'm knocking certain exercises and things of that sort because I'm passionate about it, guys. Because I, I'm passionate about horse and serious loads. You know what I'm saying? So it has nothing to do with him. It's not, when I say this stuff, it's not about him personally. But I'm just saying, like, okay, he's doing this exercise. Like, look at this stupid exercise. Who is getting colossal quadriceps? Unless you're pumping horse compounds in your body. Who do you see? You're going to see someone doing this and they just going to be jacked and stacked, succulent and dense. Or are you going to see some, you know, toothpick doing it, talking about optimization and the stretch, just basically trying to find any excuse not to load up a bar and put it on his back. Getting their knees all the way forward. But if you can get the technique down, I do think they're probably the best squat option for getting into a super deep stretch. On the Get the frick out of here. This is the best squat option. This is so stupid. This is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Elevate your heat on here. You want the best squat option? Get a nice safety squat bar, okay, where it's the best of both worlds. You're not having to do the stupid front rack position. It's resting on there. It's stable, yet it's pitching you forward, so you have to stay upright. Elevate those freaking heels on a squat wedge or on plates or something and squat. You're going to have huge freaking knee drive forward. You can get ass to grass as deep as the freaking deep blue sea. 
and there's no freaking learning curve as, as long as you know how to squat. This is the dumbest shit. I've, I, this is, I am so passionate about hating this dumb exercise. But, so despite some limitations, I'm feeling A or B tier on B. Frickin I do find them a bit awkward though, so let's go with B tier. Yeah. All right, and if yeah, I had to crown this one exercise as the best of the best for quad growth, I think I'd have to go with a hack squat. Oh. I personally find the pendulum squat feels better, but because most gyms don't have one, I'll go with a hack squat. The one issue with hacks is that on some machines, you can't get to full depth without coming up solid. If that's the case for you, try adding some yoga blocks on top of your shoulders and- This is such a freaking. Dude, I see all sorts of tricks now. People are manipulating the hacks up. I talked about this earlier with the, the reverse bands, and now I see people putting like foam rollers behind their back, so essentially it's taking away that upright torso angle. And everyone's doing everything to manipulate this stupid machine. And again, I'm not even knocking the hack squat. I think the hack squat's a good exercise. We're just talking about the best of the best, and we're looking at certain exercises and comparing them. But guys, I mean, at the end of the day, Tom Platts went bananas on the hot in the hack squat and tom platz has the just the most rotundous humongous mutant legs uh and was a huge advocate of squats and all of that um so yeah i mean the, i guess the beautiful thing of the hack squat is you can you know very easily do drop sets you can have you can have a training partner or something you can burn it out someone can strip and play it doesn't need to be evenly loaded on each side since it's just one freaking singular unit so like it's very easy to do like increased um, intensity techniques with it for sure. You can have someone help push up. You can force up reps, like heavy negatives, all that kind of stuff. So the versatility is certainly there. It's a, uh, an exceptional tool, but uh, I don't know if I would rank it above just doing a heels elevated squat for the quads, just because like if time has proven anything. Time and time again, it's that freaking big boy squats make freaking big boys. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but, uh, you know, whatever. Hack squat, solid choice. Personally, it's not my favorite, but uh, I know a lot of, you know, psychos use it and swear by it. Kind of forces you in that upright angle. So. And you'll be able to get all the way down. And if your gym doesn't have a hack squat, I'd say a high bar, barbell back squat would be. Oh, good. So yeah, but again, why not just elevate your heels? And then you can even make it more quad dominant. So that's why that's what I'm talking about, guys. A lot of the, with this stuff, it's like we're looking at certain exercises, but there's a million ways you can manipulate these things to make it even more quad dominant, or you can do vice versa and make it more hip dominant. Get the frick out of here, Hagen does. My alternate go-to as a number one quad builder. And if I had to pick one exercise as the F minus, I guess it had to be the Bosu ball squat. Just get rid of the Bosu ball and it'd be. Dude, at least the Bosu ball squat's an actual squat. At least you can squat on the Bosu ball. Get that freaking stupid ass sissy squat out of here. Put that shit in F minus. That's the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. And personally, I know a lot of people are gonna defend that shit to death. I know a lot of people are passionate about those sissy squats. I guarantee I'm going to get lots of comments. And power to you for that. But all I'm saying is that's some pencil like shit. It immediately becomes more stable, more safe, and more effective. Now, do you know the best and worst triceps exercises? If not, you got to check out my new video on triceps training over here. And that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. All right. Well, holy buckets. Guys, this video... This took an hour and a half of my time. I'm gonna freaking edit it because it's unbearable to watch, but thank you for hanging in there. Again, I'm not claiming to have all the answers. I just try to look at things objectively through experience because I have, guys, I have gone through all these phases where it's like, holy buckets, a sissy squat, I gotta try that out. Oh man, I feel that a lot. And then I always go back to other things, like, oh, that shit's stupid. The squat's way better, you know what I'm saying? Or why don't I try doing these deep hack squats with these reverse bands and, and it's like, okay. And then I go back and it's like, oh, you know? And so I'm saying, I just, this is just coming from uh, experience, basically, and no bias of one thing towards the other. Yeah, I mean, of course I I tend to think that free weights are better than machines, but I, uh, I'm i all for using a machine to just go freaking full potatoes. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like I was just saying at the end, the hack squat, 
hey, it's a cool tool because you can do like mega drop sets. Same thing with like leg extension. You don't even need a partner for the leg extension. You know what I mean? That's like the one thing where you can just really get a freaking hot lava burn in your quads. It's hard to do with that. So like they, they're the tools that are applicable at times and they're certainly advantageous. But if we're talking about one, you know, if we're talking about two people, two Johnnies, right? Johnny Pencil Neck versus Johnny Horsecock. You have to think, okay, which one is Johnny Pencil Neck going to choose? And usually they're going to choose the freaking uh, sissy squat over the back squat 100%. You know what I'm saying? And that is why they are indeed Johnny Pencil Neck. So it's just, it's, again, it's ways to look at things. And again, there's no exercise is S tier or F tier. I think it's how you freaking attack that sucker at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee, I guarantee freaking T. He said F minus BOSU ball squats. I guarantee I can have an absolute killer workout on the BOSU balls. I guarantee you that. I might even make a video of that. Freaking just losing my mind. Max intensity through the wazoo. Let me do the BOSU ball squats for an hour and report back to you the next day. And I guarantee freaking T I'll have some killer quadriceps soreness. Yeah, I mean, freaking, it might even be an experiment. I might be all about this. And then maybe we'll even do an experiment where we measure the freaking thighs and then do nothing but BOSU ball squats for the next month. And then let's measure those suckers again. And I, you know what? I would promise my freaking life that I could pro I would probably could put some size on my legs. Whereas doing a sissy squat, there's not many ways, you know, oh, it's like, a, okay, I'm going to put some five pound plate on my chest. And I'll do a 10 pound plate on my chest, you know? But again, you know, I say that, but again, you could go freaking full potatoes on the sissy squat. And as long as you attack it and, bring some voluptuous cojones to battle as you do that and with a mindset of a freaking champion and out of a, a soft daisy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can probably get some growth out of it too. So I guess what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say you got to find what feels good to you, what you enjoy doing. Um, I mean, there's, yeah, it's really what feels good to you. Like in terms of like, oh, I feel this, this is a good intense contraction I have. I can load this sucker up. I get a good freaking pump with this thing. I can progress with this. Like, you know, and it's honestly, it kind of goes in line with what his ranking is. Like, does it feel good? Is there a big stretch and all that? So I, at the end of the day, though, guys, we're all unique organisms. So it's just like, you find what works for you. But for the most part, we got to go off of history. You know what I'm saying? And history proves time and time again that athletic freak specimens do the free weights and the Johnny pencil necks do the, you know, the freaking isolation machines. It's just, it's time tested. I can keep just going in circles saying that machines have applications and they're beneficial as well. Of course they are. So let's not get in a freaking panties in a bunch, okay? I'm just putting it all up there. Dick Del Hagen, one hour and 30 minute review. It's been a battle, but we made it through it, guys. I appreciate you. And uh, frick, man, should I do the BOSU ball experiment?